Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Richie Faulkner plays in a little band called Judas Priest, and this year Epiphone has given him his own signature model. It doesn't have an insane, over-the-top look that a lot of similarly shaped guitars go for, but there's more going on here than you'd expect from your typical Epiphone Flying V. So how's this different from the rest? Let's take a closer look. So this guitar is kind of modeled after Richie Faulkner's own Gibson Flying V. The guitar feels solidly put together, and I mean at this point I've tried enough high-end Epiphones to just take that as a given. Epiphones at this price point are generally pretty consistent when it comes to quality. The Faulkner V has fairly traditional specs, mahogany body, mahogany neck, and ebony fingerboard with 22 jumbo frets. So I really like how classic and at the same time unique this guitar looks. It's essentially a black flying V with a white full body pickguard, which you basically never see. I'm not sure they offer it on any other models, Epiphone or Gibson. In an interview with Epiphone, Richie Faulkner explained that not only does it look cool, but with all the leather and spikes on his clothing for Judas Priest, he needed the larger pickguard to protect the guitar. The headstock has the Judas Priest logo, and there's a Falcon inlay, which is like Faulkner's personal logo, on the 12th fret. So it's different enough to identify this guitar as a special edition, but subtle enough so I don't feel like a walking, talking Judas Priest advert. This guitar is also loaded with a couple features that you wouldn't normally find on Epiphones. The most obvious is the addition of a Floyd Rose tremolo. Love them or hate them, you cannot deny that they are a lot of fun. I had to keep the screw and trem arm out of the guitar because otherwise I just got carried away doing dive bombs all over the place instead of working on the review. Instead of the traditional three knob scheme, the controls have been slimmed down to just a single volume knob. Now whether you'll like that or not is all subjective. For me, that's a plus since I never use the tone knobs anyways and I like the uncluttered layout. But if tone knobs are a huge part of how you color your sound, well, that's unfortunate. And speaking of sound, the Faulkner V comes from the factory with an EMG 57 and 66 set. This is one of the main reasons I really wanted to demo this guitar. I've only heard great things about this pickup combination, and I've been dying to try them out. So here's what they sound like through my dual rectifier. First, the dirty channel. <laughs>
and now the clean channel. So they're cool. They remind me of the EMG headset, both in the way that they look with the black chrome covers and pole pieces, but also in the way that they sound. They're both kind of passive flavored active sets, and especially under high gain, they all have similar EMG characteristics. But if I had to put the difference into words, I'd say the headset is crunchier and fuller, like a wall of sound, whereas the 5766 is creamier and more defined. Now back to the guitar, the neck is one of my favorite parts about the Faulkner Flying Bee. It has a thin C profile with a satin finish, which gives it a very modern feel. That's a nice change of pace, since Epiphones usually feel much more traditional than other competitor guitars. And now it's time for my favorite segment, Simon Says, where we ask my guitar noob roommate what he thinks of the Epiphone Faulkner Flying V. I'm gonna unbox this guitar. Ta-da! Backpack case. You're literally seeing this guitar before I'm seeing this guitar. Oh, you haven't seen this yet? Nope. Oh. Alright, you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> That's so cool. It looks like a penguin. Ta-da! See? Whoa. <laughs> Tuxedo penguin fancy man. So, Richie Faulkner is the lead guitarist for Judas Priest. Have you heard of Judas Priest? No. They're like one of the legendary metal bands from the 19... No, never mind. All right. Fuck it. What do you think? What are your impressions? Um, this is an interesting shape. How do you like hold this? Because like most guitars, they have that little like U shape. You can like put your hand here and play, but this shape makes it so you can't... I hope that wasn't important. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just styrofoam. Yeah, so you're supposed to put like oh. the, the bottom wing like on on your leg. Yeah, like that. You're supposed to, yeah. You're fucking with me. <laughs> I'm actually what not. I'm actually it's not. It's like a cello. No, people tell. Like, I like cellos that like. So in in demos that I do of these shaped guitars, I do them standing up because I find that incredibly uncomfortable, and I get yelled at all the time in the comments. So like, it's arguably one of the best things to just play sitting okay. down. But you, so you hold it like this, and you're playing it like this. Well, it doesn't need to be like that extreme an angle. It's still uncomfortable, right? Yeah, this is terribly uncomfortable. This is not how I would hold a guitar. Thank this you. It's just so strange. Okay, I have never played guitar, but you know. Everything is symmetrical because it's like this shape. It's like a triangle, you know? It's like a rocket ship. <laughs> one knob. What is this, tone? Probably volume. Probably volume. I think I've seen one of these before on like one of those guitar yo guitars on Xbox. <laughs> they have one of these like things where you can like like pull or like pull down on. Yeah. It does the same thing, it makes it like go up and down. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah, so usually I don't get ones with that with that bridge because I have no idea how to set them up. I guess that's why there's less knobs. There's just one more cup, you know. There's one extra thing you have to worry about here. So there's less knobs to worry about down here. Can't sleep. <laughs> just completely, completely separate. How much do you think this guitar costs? A thousand. Yes. Oh. How many thumbs would you give this one? Uh, I mean, it, it looks nice. It's like a solid guitar in terms of the quality. I just don't know about the shape, you know? It's like too symmetrical, I think. It kind of irks me. Usually guitars are not that symmetrical. Like if you cut this in half, you don't know which one is which half. A slanted top thumb. The same angle that the guitar would be at when you play it like that? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So I think whether you'll like this guitar or not comes down to how you feel about flying bees. 
Personally, I find them really uncomfortable to play sitting down. I really like the specs and the feature set of the Faulkner V. I'm just waiting for the Les Paul version. But if you love the V-shape and you want one that won't break the bank but is still fully loaded and ready to go right out of the box with a Floyd and EMGs, this guitar is perfect. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. These are just my opinions and I'd love to hear yours, so leave them in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support what I do and get bonus extras like song downloads and now tabs, check out my Patreon. Thanks goes to Sam Ash for making this guitar available and to Pad for mixing the demo track. Pricing, availability, all the links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome. This is the Epiphone Richie Falconer Flying V, and I'll see you for the next video.